there comes a point where it's every country for themselves or every man for themselves. And these countries like Australia or South Africa or the UK or, or, or even Canada may look at selling product to the United States very differently than they once did. Um, especially when gold and, and silver were, you know, tertiary investments at best second, third, or fourth in line, maybe even more after things like stocks, bonds, real estate, and, and other forms of, of insurance and whatnot. So um, things change. And I think we are getting to that point, this, this collective realization. And it's all going to be square in the face of the G7. And these are the countries that are selling gold to the United States, with the exception of South Africa, um, and may look at doing just that very differently and and be more nationalistic and and take care of their own. So yeah, I I, I think that this is this is exactly how it happened. In today's news recap, silver price forecast, XAG slash USD rebounds and climbs above $31. Silver prices bounce and cleared the October 9th high of $30.77, following mixed US inflation and jobs data. Momentum turns slightly bullish, with buyers in control, as RSI breaks above the neutral 50 level. Key resistance lies at $31.50 for a bullish continuation, targeting $32 and the white ED high of $32.95. A drop below $31 could trigger a pullback toward $30.22 and $30.12. Silver prices bounced off a three-week low rallied over 0.6% and traded at $31.12 at the time of writing. Mixed data from the United States, U.S., showed inflation edging up and a soft jobs report. Although it triggered some upside in the precious metal, hawkish remarks by Atlanta's Fed President Rafael Bostic capped silver's advance. Silver prices have cleared the October 9th daily high of $30.77, extending their gains past the $31 figure. Nevertheless, Silver's is not out of the woods after Tuesday's plunge of over 3.2%, pushing the gray's metal to hit a multi-week low. Momentum shifted slightly bullishly, as seen by the Relative Strength Index, RSI, piercing the 50 neutral lines, suggesting buyers regained control. For a bullish continuation, XAG slash USD must clear the psychological level of $31.50. Once surpassed, the next stop would be the $32 figure, followed by the year-to-date whitey high of $32.95. Conversely, if silver drops below $31, this could pave the way for a pullback. The first support would be the October 9th low of $30.22, followed by the October 8th swing low of $30.12. Now we'll show you the best clips of the latest interview. But first hit the like button, smash the subscribe button, and turn on notifications so you do not miss out our daily recaps. There are signs all over the place. You know, the Fed drops short-term interest rates down but at the same time, we see the back end of the curve start to go up. And, and that to me is the market or big money selling long dated claims for the future delivery of, of dollars, um, which increases interest rates for the bonds. And this is, this is not a good omen. Uh, this is, is at the same time, we see them buying gold and silver at a rate the world is, has never seen before. And I think that for a long time, um, we had, it seemed, this geopolitical cooperation, in particular in the price of oil and the price of gold, um, with the Saudis and with other countries. And it seems as though this is the markets are no longer discounting this geopolitical cooperation, at least in my mind, in terms of the price of oil and in terms of gold. And they are starting to separate themselves. We can look at a country like, for example, in this case, a country like Poland, who has now decided to uh, continue to purchase gold. They're already at 420 metric tons. Um, it's got they have more gold now than uh, the EU. And when you talk about 
what Adam Glapinski, the head of the central bank, said is that he wants to get it up to as high as 20% of their foreign exchange reserves. And I want to remind people what Adam Glapinski said when asked recently, uh, you know, why is it that you buy gold? And he says, um, because gold will retain its value even when someone cuts off the power to the global financial system, destroying traditional assets based on electronic accounting records. Now, of course, we don't assume that this will happen, but as the saying goes, forewarned is forearmed. Uh, when you hear things like this, it becomes very, very important. We're seeing a re uh, the breakout of gold in Swiss francs, which is uh, a very important confirmation uh, because the the especially in terms of other currencies where we've seen gold break out in most currencies, but the Swiss franc has been one of the world's top performing currencies this year and in years past. And a breakout in Swiss francs above moving averages is even more, uh, you know, monumentous. And, and it is, and it's happening. Uh, we're seeing countries like Iran who have, um, increased their gold ownership and purchasing by six times this year, um, uh, compared to the same time last year. And there was an interesting, um, article that came out about a hacking group uh, that exposed documents from a company called uh, Tandar Sa Sa Sara. I know I butchered the hell out of that name. But anyways, this company is involved in drone technology, and it's linked to, to Iran, to their military. And the hack documents that came out, kind of like a WikiLeaks thing, said that Iran paid $1.75 billion in a deal for uh, drones, and the payment was made with several tons of gold ingots. We're seeing a shift away. We're seeing a movement away from the West, a shift away from treasuries, a shift away from dollars, and, and a changing of the guard. And, you know, countries are tired of sanctions and the bullying, and they're trying to get out of the way of the West, and they're doing that by purchasing over a billion, excuse me, a trillion dollars of gold since 2022 while selling a trillion dollars in treasuries. This is a trend that is unmistakable. When we talk about the countries in Project Embridge, uh, the ones that, that are moving to what I believe is, is really the big, big moment. And that is if indeed we see a, a common settlement currency come out of this meeting in October or in a few weeks here in, in Russia. It's noteworthy to note that, um, all of the countries in Embridge, uh, China, Hong Kong, Thailand, UAE, they all run a current budget surplus, and all of them have been increasing their gold reserves. Um, and instead of buying treasuries, this is what's called gold recycling, and they're storing their trade surpluses in gold instead of U.S. treasuries. This is huge. All of these things are, are going to factor in to this big moment. And it's also noteworthy to note that China, Hong Kong, and the UAE all have sophisticated precious metals markets. The the one in Shanghai, the volume has now surpassed the COMEX dramatically with a 400% increase in volume over the past six months or less. It's now the second most actively traded market in the world. You can see the pieces are being put into place. It's not just gold. We find out that Russia's federal budget draft includes plans to acquire not just gold, platinum, and plating, but for the first time ever announced by central bank silver. And it's the first time that the central bank has ever made a significant announcement in this regards. And, you know, could it push it above 50? Yeah, why not? When you have stupidity to the degree that we have suppression on the COMEX market, on the LBMA, yeah, it's rocket fuel. And maybe that's why we see the Citibank analyst, Max Layton, come out and say that, uh, well, first of all, silver's up about 35% so far this year. But they're predicting over the next three months a rise up to $38. Uh, and and maybe even higher. So all of these things are beginning to to factor in to um, you know into the the global picture, and that discounts all the stupidity that we are seeing at home, where 167 million dollars was just given to Lebanon uh, approved um, in aid, 385 million already this year, and yet. We need to get congressional approval to approve additional aid to North Carolina at the same time. And they've gotten a fraction of that amount. Um, it's unbelievable where, where this, this moron, um, 
um, the, the head of Homeland Security, uh, my, 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 what is it, Mayorkas, uh, came out just on Wednesday, I think, and he said uh, the, that they don't have enough funds in FEMA, that they've already spent more than $1.4 billion since the fall of 2022 to address the migrant crisis, uh, and they expect another hurricane hitting a la tomorrow, uh, but they don't have enough money to, to do it. And, you know, it, it's, it's, it's disgusting that we've given $1.4 million to illegal immigrants here, money taken from FEMA to, and at the same time, in, a, in an environment, you know, and this is kind of just, I digress for a second, where it just seems that with this modern monetary theory BS that's all over the place where we can spend money to a degree that no one's ever seen before. We can create a, 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 a hundred thousand in debt every second and a trillion every hundred days, which took 200 years to do the first time that we don't even have enough decency uh, and, and even a hollow gesture to, to stuff the coffers of, con- uh, of organizations like FEMA so they can come in and help us when we need it most. It, it's just unbelievable that we give money all around the world. Um, and, and don't, don't take care of our own. Um, it, it's it's hor- horrific. An important point that Skekman raises is the breakout of gold in various currencies, particularly in Swiss francs. This is a significant development because the Swiss franc is one of the world's strongest currencies. The fact that gold is breaking out in such a stable currency indicates a rising demand for precious metals, not just in weaker economies, but even in stronger ones. Furthermore, Skekman underscores that countries like Iran have increased their gold purchases by six times compared to last year. Iran has even used gold as a means of payment for military technology, highlighting the rising importance of gold in international trade. The de-dollarization trend continues to gain momentum as countries move away from U.S. treasuries in favor of gold. Since 2022, Countries have sold approximately a trillion dollars worth of U.S. treasuries while purchasing a trillion dollars worth of gold. Skekman emphasizes that this is not just a coincidence, but a carefully calculated move by countries to protect themselves from the sanctions and monetary policies of the West. Project Enbridge, a collaboration between China, Hong Kong, Thailand, and the UAE, is another sign of this shift. All of these nations run current budget surpluses and are stockpiling gold rather than U.S. treasuries, indicating a long-term plan to move away from dollar reliance. Skekman points to China as a key player in this shift, particularly through the Shanghai Gold Exchange, which has now surpassed the COMEX in trading volume. He notes that the rise of gold markets outside of the U.S. is a clear indication that power is shifting eastward. In Russia, Plans to accumulate not just gold, but also platinum, palladium, and for the first time, silver, are part of a broader strategy to decouple from Western financial influence. Skekman speculates that silver prices, which have already risen significantly this year, could rise even higher, with some analysts predicting a near-term surge to $38 per ounce or more. One of the more alarming points Skekman discusses is the possibility of gold revaluation. He believes that central banks, particularly in the West, are fully aware of the role that gold can play in stabilizing their economies. Rather than confiscating gold, Skekman suggests that governments may allow the price of gold to rise so dramatically that it effectively prices out the average investor. This is what he refers to as the gold revaluation, a process that could be used to pay off massive national debts without resorting to outright default or hyperinflation. There comes a point where it's every country for themselves or every man for themselves. And these countries like Australia or South Africa or the UK or, or, or even Canada may look at selling product to the United States very differently than they once did, um, especially when gold and, and silver were, you know, tertiary investments at best second, third, or fourth in line, maybe even more after things like stocks, bonds, real estate. And, and other forms of, of insurance and whatnot. So um, things change. And I think we are getting to that point, this, this collective realization. 
And it's all going to be square in the face of the G7. And these are the countries that are selling gold to the United States, with the exception of South Africa, um, and may look at doing just that very differently and and be more nationalistic and and take care of their own. So, yeah, I I, I think that this is this is exactly how it happens. You know, I was talking with my dad the other day and said, yeah, I don't think there'll be gold confiscation. They'll just make gold so expensive that no one can afford to buy it. And and this is the gold revaluation. And, and I want to, you know, I, I've read this before, but I want to read it one last time before we sign off. You know, I read to you what what uh, Adam Glapinski said, but I think it's really important to go back to, you know, sometimes the further back we go, the more clear things become. And if you don't understand history, you're doomed to repeat its mistakes. And we talk about going all the way back to, um, and I may have read this on your show before, but for those who didn't hear it, it's worth repeating one more time as we sign off. Uh, and this was a, a conversation be, you know, between a man named um, Thomas Enders and, um, uh, what's his name? Kissinger. And it was a meeting that they had, and this was from the Freedom of Information Act, a meeting they had in 1974. And it goes like this. Um, Mr. Enders says to Kissinger, it is against our interest to have gold in the system um, because for it to remain in it would result in it being revalued um, periodically. And although we still have some substantial gold holdings, a larger part of the official gold in the world is concentrated in Western Europe. This gives them the dominant position in world reserves and the dominant means of creating reserves. We've been trying to get away from that into a system which we can control. And Kissinger says, but that's a balance of payments problem. And Mr. Ender says, yes, but it's a question of who has the most leverage internationally. If they have the reserve creating instrument by having the largest amount of gold and the ability to change its price periodically, they have a position relative to ours of considerable power. They're going to revalue the price of gold. I believe that in my soul. And when you see the central banks of the world who are the most well-informed traders on the planet, not only wickedly accumulated at a level that is increasing year over year, month over month, day over day, hiding how much they're really truly accumulating, um, and then speaking continuously of gold being held in the revaluation account and the prospect of indeed revaluing it, it will happen. I do believe that. And and they will use it to reliquify the system, which will create massive inflation. But it is something that I think that they will do. Uh, it is a is a, a, a way of maybe option three, instead of defaulting, instead of outright hyperinflating in your face, they'll revalue gold, which will create massive inflation, but which will, will enable them to pay off a large portion of of the debt. And I think that's what we are seeing. And I think you go back to 1974 after we were off the gold standard already. So they're calling it a reserve creating instrument. Gold is eternal. They understand this. The big money understands it. And he who has the gold and the commodities makes the rules and all of the metal is heading eastward. So whether we beat them to the punch and kind of steal their thunder, which wouldn't surprise me, or they do it, uh, I would say by... And I don't want to, to go out on a limb, but I will and say, you know, by this time next year, wouldn't surprise me one iota if we saw gold revalued to a level that would shock people. Um, and it, it's an option that's staring them right in the face. And I think it's hard to ignore. So I'm not one for making predictions like this, but I think it's just too, too much uh, is happening that is leading this way for it not to be understood that that. The narrative is being rewritten right in front of us on gold. And and now with Russia coming out and saying silver too, and China buying up all the concentrate and the dory all around the world, gold and silver have never been more important. And I hope people are taking these weekly calls we have with with you know with a dose of seriousness because I think uh this is this is it. I really do. Um Getting gold will not be as easy as it once was before this is all said and done, and and the price will be much higher as a result of the world understanding that by revaluing it, much of their problems can be washed away, and I think they already noticed that.